Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match: Yogg's Dot versus Steel Blue. This is actually part of a series that seems like they were playing a few nights ago. I casted one of them last Wednesday, and this is going to be in Kulta. The last one was Trojan Hills, which, admittedly, I probably should have swapped because Trojan Hills is a map I prefer. But in Kulta is a good map too. So in Kulta is what we're going to be seeing. It is a very vehicle-focused map, very flat. As you can see, it's, yeah, it's really flat. Oh, I should probably ro drop the rotation speed on that one. Anyway, yeah, it's pretty flat. So, bear that in mind, it is not a map that is going to be particularly useful for bots. And we see mostly plus two, plus two point one. No, there's nothing really on this map that has a whole lot of high value metal. It's pretty even, which is nice. So overall, the map really encourages players to set up along the sides, try to take the center somewhat, but not as much as, say, Alien Desert, which is essentially just Inculta, but smaller. A Alien Desert is basically, I think, this section of Inculta, roughly, is Alien Desert. So Inculta being a little bit larger, there's, well, there's more to it. So you're not starting here and here, you're starting over at the corners. But it's the same general principle. You want to get a lot of the stuff over the edges. Taking the center is important, and usually whoever takes the center will win. But it's less important than Alien Desert, being that there isn't quite as high of a concentration of the in the center as there is in Alien Desert. There's actually more of a concentration along the sides. So it's a bit more even. You can take your side, and you'll still be pretty healthy. You basically, you'll get from here, I think this has got to be at least 30 metal. That's more than enough to get into the mid-game, mid to late game. It's 30 is fine. So... Without further ado, let us begin. Steel Blue going for Tank Factory, while Yogstoth goes for the Light Vehicle Factory. Yogstoth is going to be probably having an easier time getting up early. Although, admittedly, this is this is a fairly large map, so honestly, given the size of the map, heavy tanks are going to have a relatively easy time, in a way. It's a bit harder because they are more expensive, it's a bit harder to spread across the map. But on the other hand, your opponent is in a corner, as are you, and there's enough space that it doesn't matter that you don't have a lot of cheap scouts. You can still build up fairly quickly. So that's fine. Yogstoth does have the dart moving forward, just about to scout Steel Blue. Steel Blue doesn't know what Yogstoth is up to yet. Doesn't really care. Does have a few Panthers, though, just in case. They're assuming tanks or vehicles. They're not assuming hovercrafts. If they were assuming hovers, they probably still would use Panthers. Yeah, I don't really see why they wouldn't. They might use Kodachis, though, just in case. But yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't. So yeah, that's Panthers. Panthers are being built, because that's just what you build. And Steel Blue is... Also get... Well, they're setting up nicely. Yogsdoth setting up a bit more nakedly. They don't have a whole lot of static defenses. They have the one Lotus and the Defender. But against heavy tanks, Defenders are not going to do too much. I think they were expecting that Steel Blue was going to go light vehicles and they'd be able to block off a dart attack, like a really early dart, using that defender. But instead they are fighting heavy tanks and early Panthers and early Kodachis are not going to go down to a defender. That is not the way to go. But that's the, that's fine. One defender is fairly cheap, so they're not going to lose out too much. Steel Blue, however, they're pretty well set up. They have everything they need where they need it, and now they have their Panthers up. And like I said, it's big enough, it doesn't really matter. It's big enough that heavy tanks will be able to get the metal they need. Like I said, plus 30 or so, that's a comfortable position for the heavy tank factory. You can do stuff before then, but plus 30, plus 40, that's when you really get Reapers out on a regular basis and Banishers. The light vehicles, on the other hand, they can work better at lower metal counts. So Yogstoth is going to be trying to overwhelm by numbers. They're going to try to get a lot of Scorchers, Levelers, Ravagers, Slashers probably at some point. They're going to try to get a lot of units. And overwhelm. And at this point, they're actually starting with a lot of darts. Interesting. I imagine they know the Panthers are there. It looks like they're trying to take advantage of the low reload time of the Panthers. Because the Panthers take like four seconds, I think? Three seconds. Yeah, get enough darts, you can overwhelm them. Because I don't think... Okay, let's double check. I'm pretty sure the Panther doesn't have too much splash. If any. Yeah, it's not entirely clear. I think they don't. Yeah, normally it would say area of effect. So yeah, it doesn't have splash, as far as I know, or if it does, it's pretty small. So as long as the darts aren't too close to them when they die, they should be fine, and they'll deal enough damage. 
basically it'll be like the squirt or like the daggers that I mentioned for the hovercraft factory. I've mentioned many times before, darts, they deal half as much damage as a dagger per second. So two darts is like a dagger, except for the health. The health is the only problem. But when you're dealing with units that hit once every three seconds, that's not a big deal. You can get enough darts, it doesn't matter. I think that is Yoktodoth's train of thought. On the other hand, Steel Blue countering that with a Kodachi. Now it's going to come down to timing. Is that Kodachi going to be up in time? And yes, it is. That Kodachi is definitely right there. So Yoktodoth scouting around, going around the back. I don't know if... They're probably just seeing if there have been any metal extractors built here. They want to know because if there are, they need to go down. And there aren't. So Yoktodoth scouting that out as Steel Blue moves forward into the darts. Going to spot those darts as they move forward as well with the Panthers. Actually, I should double check. Are they going to spot them? Yes, they're going to spot them. They didn't even know they were there. The darts have been spotted. Not even going to engage the Panthers. I think that Yogstoth is going to have to change up the strategy. Looks like they already have. They're going straight for Scorchers instead. Now against Panthers, I don't think that's the best idea. Scorchers are basically designed to be countered by Panthers. That's actually something... I think it was. Pretty sure that, that was the way the relationship went. That was something from a while ago. That is going to work out pretty terribly for those Panthers. However, it doesn't matter. There's probably enough of them, and honestly... Sorry, for the Scorchers. For the Scorchers. So it's going to work out poorly for the Scorchers. It's going to work out well for the Panthers. The Kodachi is just going to be able to deal some damage, go around the map, possibly die because there are two Lotuses right here that it's about to run into. That it's just... There it goes. Yeah. Steel Blue paying attention, though. Does not let the Kodachi die. Does get damaged quite a lot, however. And it looks like... Is it going to get hit? Yes, it's going to get completely hit by these two Scorchers. Does set one of them on fire. That's something. Actually, he's able to heal up decent well. So yeah, it's not going to go down too quickly. While at the same time, we see Yogstoth is setting up an attack over to the north. Looks like they're going to try to attack from the north, going south, through the main base directly. And Panthers, at the same time, going along the south side of the map. Yogstoth getting hit pretty hard. One of the Panthers does go down, however. The second Panther will not go down before that Lotus goes down. And on top of that, level is coming around the back. That is a really good choice. Counters the Panthers very effectively. Takes out one, and the other one is pretty much dead as well. Scorch on the other side, just to deal with that, even though that probably won't do enough to completely kill it. Like I said, Panthers do counter Scorchers. At least chases it away. And the Leveler was not in position. Oh, that is unfortunate. It did a little donut. At the same time, Yogg'Soth attacking from the north. All the Darts did go down. Scorchers, not so much. But the Scorchers... They need to deal with... Oh, unfortunately the Scorchers did not manage to deal with anything. Looks like they managed to get rid of a few Solar Collectors first, which is good. But yeah, a lot of dead darts. Not ideal. Yogstoth switching pretty decisively to Levelers, though, which is good to see. Now, will we see Reapers anytime soon? Because Steel Blue does have their plus 30. They're getting their Caretakers. They're still going for Panthers. Looks like they might still be going for Mass Panther. I could see that being a bit of a problem. Nine levelers coming in against... How many panthers are there? Six panthers. Yeah, the levelers do have a decisive advantage here. They'll take them out, and especially as they start taking them out, the EMP burst will just take out more and more of them. And the Kodachi, not able to do too much either. Able to run away. There are no... No, there's no levelers in the way. So that Kodachi is going to be free to escape at this point. Except that it's escaping through a Scorcher, which is... Not even going to be a problem. It's not going to come up, actually. However, at this point, if you look at the map itself, Yogstoth, they look like they have more territory, but Steel Blue has a bit better economy. Steel Blue's taken more of the center, that being the difference. Yogstoth, however, has taken more of the defensive parts of the economy, or defensible parts of the economy, so they are going to be better off if they get attacked. However, they're also on the offensive, which means they can start building up from here as well. That's going to be very effective. And the main base, lots of reclaim from the commander, taking all those darts, taking that massive donation from Yogstoth. Steel Blue taking advantage of that to pull in. Try to get back in this game. I mean, they're okay, they're pretty much in this game already. They're, they aren't any way out of the game, but it does help them out. Pulls them ahead is probably more relevant. Unfortunately, Leveler is getting outnumbered here by the Panthers. They were not in position, they were not grouped up, so they couldn't take care of the Panthers effectively enough. Instead, being used as harassment forces instead of Scorchers. Apparently, Yogg'Soth is very afraid that they're going to lose a lot of Scorchers to those Panthers if they use them for harassment, and instead loses a couple levelers. Far more valuable units than them, but it's... that's how it goes.
However, Yogtatoth is going to be going for... Well, okay, if these levelers die, they're probably going to be going for more direct assault. Because these levelers are dead. I mean, one of the Panthers does go down, but unfortunately not enough. My two levelers might have a chance if they hit the right Panthers. No, it really needs to be both levelers at the same time. I don't, this is really unfortunate for Yogtatoth. They have lost... They have been fighting entirely one-on-group leveler fights. If those levelers were together, those Panthers would be dead. Sadly, they were not together. I don't know why Yogg-Soth is not grouping up their levelers. Like, levelers go well as groups. They they don't anti-synergize. And there's the score. There are the slashers. The slashers have been built. Or are being built. They're being queued. And yogg has gone for a gunship plant as well. Or halfway done gunship plant. So they're getting the first air switch. No air or strider switch for Steel Blue. They actually haven't even switched over to Reaper. Wow, really no Reapers? That's that's surprising. They're at plus 54. I would think Reapers would be on the table. Maybe they're waiting until they get this fusion reactor done. They can actually build up Reapers effectively. But yeah, that's kind of surprising. Also, it looks like they're they're draining metal somewhere. See, they're building up over there. They're building up in the middle. They're using maybe 20 metal there? Hmm, I don't know. But yeah, once this fusion plant is done, then they'll stop accessing metal and actually be able to keep going. But at the same time, Yogstoth building up more and more levelers, getting a Banshee as well for good measure. Because why not, really? Why not get a Banshee? As the levelers continuing to move in, should be able to deal with any Panthers they encounter, assuming they stay in a group, as of course. But they are, so that should be fine. Yogstoth not splitting out to harass too much. Did actually send one to the south, but that's okay. Sending one out like that is fine. Splitting up the entire group, not so much. But at this point, yeah, two groups of four? That should be enough for the Panthers being sent in. How many Panthers are there? There are 12 Panthers and far more levelers. Yogstoth. This is going to be tricky now. Reapers are coming in after the fusion plant was completed. So it's really going to come down to how well Yogstoth can deal damage in the meantime. Getting their levelers out of position, the Panthers going for a straight attack. These slashers are not going to help. Too, they'll help a little bit, but not too much. They're not attacking. They're not in fight mode, so they're not going to go into the stop, into the deployment mode immediately. As soon as they see the Panthers, they're they're going to have a bit of a harder time because yeah, slashers in fight mode will automatically stop to fire. As soon as they, they see units, they will stop. They will shoot, but only if they're in fight move, not regular move. And they were in regular move. So it didn't quite work out, unfortunately, for Yogg-Sothoth. And now the Reaper's up. This is going to be much trickier. And now there's more Reapers coming up, too. The Reapers are queued. And that's the thing. We're now dealing with four Reapers. And that is a huge amount of Reapers. That is a... That's... That is a Strider worth of Reapers. We are into Strider territory, which makes sense given the economy. It's just that at this point, those... That mass of Lovelers didn't actually do much. They're going around harassing a bit, but they didn't kill the Panthers off. So the Panthers are able to go have free reign, kill everything as well. Not much is stopping them. The levelers are trying to harass, they're trying to counter harass. And they're harassing from where the reapers, or sorry, the reapers are not. The reapers are not down south. They're being pulled a bit out of position as a result of this. But there are enough to the north to stop the levelers. There are going to be enough to the south to stop the levelers if, no, Steel Blue's not stopping them. Steel Blue knows they're coming. Steel Blue's not stopping them. I guess they assume that the static defenses will be enough, and probably, actually, especially since most of them are going really far south first. Like, they're splitting up massively. I don't think Yogg-Soth is paying attention to this at all. Oh, no, they actually are. Yeah, they're totally paying attention to this. Okay, that's weird. Oh, also turns out there actually still is a bit of a problem with the camera. Following player cursors. I had no chance of testing this before. Sorry about that. So, yeah, following player cursors, still slightly wonky, but everything else is fine. Which I hate to have to say because, yeah, you know, engine. But whatever. Anyway. Yogstoth able to tear apart. Well, two Lotuses, no big deal. Three Lotuses, a bigger deal. A bunch of Reapers. If it weren't for the fact that there's a lot of Banshees in the air, a dozen Banshees in the air, that would have been a problem. But the Banshees are being enough. Where are the Copperheads or, more importantly, the Banishers? There are none. Reapers are the only unit of choice here. That is very surprising. Because that's also going to destroy them. Oh. Okay, well, I'll, sorry, KKK, I'll respond to your question about Melty Bud later. So, at this point, Steel Blue is actually turning this around. 
Despite the Strider's worth of Reapers, those are not being used effectively, they're not being used offensively, and there's no anti-air to defend against this. There is an air switch, though. Hawks are being built up, but then again, Tridents could be built up to counter this. They are not, though. Instead, more and more Banshees. How many Banshees have been built up so far? 18 Banshees. Well, 17 Banshees. Along with the Slashers and Lovers, I think Yogstoth will be able to pull this out. Oh yeah, they've totally got the military advantage. It's just the Reapers... It's just lack of counter to the Banshees. If the Banshees could be countered, nothing on the ground could really deal with that many Reapers. But the Banshees have not been dealt with, and the Reapers have not been acting aggressively. And this giant harassment force to the south is not being dealt with. Now there's a couple Reapers to try to deal with it, but that has dealt so much damage as it is. Yogstoth has taken the economic advantage. They already have the military advantage because they weren't building up the Reapers as much. They weren't building up the fusion plant. They still managed to take advantage of the fact that they were not building up their economy as quickly. They have a fusion plant now, but they weren't building it up when they didn't have much of a military to work with. And that is going to basically be game. A little surprising though, I thought... I really thought those Reapers would have an easier time. They do appear to be not even attacking though, kind of getting in each other's way. It's not surprising they aren't attacking these slashers. But at the same time, yeah, the middle of the map, thanks to the Banshees primarily, that is Yogstoth, and Yogstoth now just pumping out unit after unit after unit. Not even worrying about building Banshees anymore, I mean... They can deal with things when they need to, but 17 Banshees is a lot. And yeah, there are Hawks, but who cares? The ground army that they have right now is massive. Just the Slashes alone. But now at this point we do have half a dozen Reapers. We do have a lot... Like I said, this is concentrated firepower though. And it's being used defensively, which is difficult to make use of. And the Reapers don't do especially well against Slashers. They're kind of slow. I mean, Kodachis would do fairly well, Panthers would do fairly well, everything else kind of is too slow. And Steel Blue with that throws in the towel. So that was an interesting game, Light Vehicle, Heavy Tank. I haven't seen Heavy Tank much recently. I don't know if it's that it's gotten weaker, or Light Vehicle's gotten stronger, Lottery's not playing as much, not sure what it is. Well, for whatever reason, Heavy Tank isn't being used as much and that game was not a particularly win some sales pitch as far as saying, hey, let's play Heavy Tank now. Hmm. I don't know what's the problem, though. I think in large part it was just that Steel Blue, their Panthers didn't really do a whole lot of damage. They didn't harass enough. They certainly didn't set up a lot of static defenses. I mean, they didn't set up a lot of static defenses. They set up a few, but once the leveler started pouring out, yeah, it's kind of tough with Heavy Tanks because you have to really set up your static defenses. Or use lighter units to deal with things like, well, the riots, their levelers are riots. The slashes are what you want to deal with with Kodachis. Or, not even Kodachis, that, even that's kind of hard. Like, you kind of want to deal with Reaper and Kodachi together, so that the Kodachis force them to either move or just shoot at the, the Reapers are what they're shooting at. So either they're shooting at the Kodachis and the Reapers can move in, or they're shooting at the Reapers and the Kodachis can move in, or they're running away from both and the Kodachis can catch up. But against... And that kind of comes down to positioning, too. Against levelers, the Reapers do work, but that still is kind of tough. I mean, I was a bit surprised we didn't see any Banishers, especially against the air. We didn't see anything to counter the Banshees. Or even the late air switches, it was. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. There'll be another game in just a moment. It will be between... Felthos and Shethelsun, or Shethaisun? Shadow One Sun? Shadow One Sun. Let's go with that. That'll be up in just a moment, but before I go, I will answer the question about Melty Blood. I like Melty Blood a lot. It's actually one of my favorite fighting games. It's... For a while, it was actually my replacement to Guilty Gear because I had no one I knew who played Guilty Gear, but a lot of people at school played Melty Blood, so I would often play that, and yeah, I really like it. I prefer the fact that it doesn't have... There's a mechanic that has... I can't remember exactly what it is. There was something it does that I kind of preferred compared to Guilty Gear, but I can't remember what it was offhand. I think it just had to do with the way that the characters moved. Yeah, the only thing I find a little bit awkward about it... Oh no, I remember what it was, is that compared to basically any other game, you have fairly... like Combos will typically be 10-20%, to 20%, so you still have to have... And even though I play Crescent Moon, they still tend to be not super long. So you tend to have a decent amount of combo potential. And the defensive options, I do like the shield. I kind of... I'm trying to think of what it was that I liked about it compared to Guilty Gear, but now I'm thinking about the fact that now I know how to roam and cancel in Guilty Gear, so maybe 
kind of even. But I do very much like it, though. I really like Melty Blood. I do want to play it more, but it's not really being played anywhere that I'm, any of the tournaments I'm going to so much. So I've been plan playing it in my spare time from time to time when I'm not practicing Skullgirls. And that's... Yeah, it's fun. I like it. I haven't been able to play enough of it recently, though, so I've gotten really rusty. Anyway, that aside, next game, Felthos and Shadow One Sun on Ravaged. Stay tuned for that. <laughs>